You are listening to Get Real Podcast. Leonard Skinner back in the fishbowl. We are quarantined. You got enough toilet paper, Dan? I, actually, I think we have one and a half rolls left. If you need to borrow some, I will be generous and lend a brother a roll of toilet paper. Do you hear that? Wow. I mean, we haven't been stooping to corn cobs or anything no. like that. No. Well, that's my good deed for the day, everybody. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> I will talk to you all later. It is Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. Well, that's a lot of twos. That is a lot of twos. Two, two. That's Don't four. mess with my two, two. That's four twos in there. Look at that. Italy. They're getting hit hard. Yeah. They've been hit really hard. Just this morning, 53,378 reported cases of coronavirus in Italy. Second highest number of reported cases behind China. And yesterday alone, this statistic is absolutely staggering just yesterday 793 reported deaths from coronavirus just yesterday in italy wow they have an older population yeah their healthcare system is not very robust and their culture is very different where they are very close to each other oh yeah you know, a lot of personal affection shown hugging shaking hands kissing things like that and just last night, Prime Minister Conti said that the nation is facing the greatest crisis since the Second World War. Wow. Just this past week, our friend Jack from S91, the progressive metal band that we spoke to last year, he reached out to see how we were doing here in the United States. When I was messaging him back and forth, he indicated to me that he's under quarantine. He's homebound. And they just extended the quarantine now till the 3rd of April. All non-essential businesses have been shut down. Wow. Did you see on the internet, it was, it was kind of touching. And um, there's such a, you know, a, a passionate, romantic, expressive culture. And the part of that social is probably why it was spreading so fast, because they're all like, you know, hey. <laughs> and, um, but did you see them singing from the windows? I did. I was, there was something beautiful about that. It, it kind of moved me. There's a lot of good things that are coming out of this. And I'm not just trying to be Guy Smiley, Mr. Positive in the midst of darkness that's really enveloping the earth right now. But this coronavirus really is a double-edged sword hmm. in a lot of ways. You have the tragedy that's going on. The economy's falling apart. But there are some good things that are coming about this. We're all kind of in the desert together right now, like you and I were. Well, several years ago, think about what what portion of our sensitivity, our expression, our consciousness is limited by distraction and how often mm -hmm. like, no, no, I got to go to work. I got to rush. I, and we're just busy, busy, busy. And then all of a sudden something that is way bigger than what you normally deal with that you're not in control of stops everything. And then you can go like, whoa, um, hopefully uh, that'll be a big room for the Holy Ghost to move on a lot of people. And I really hope so. And I really think that's what what's going to happen. So when Jack was texting back and forth to me, it's like, dude, let's get you on. Let's talk again and find out really what's going on in Italy and going on with you. So Dan and I, we're going to reach out to Jack Manfredi from S91, progressive metal band out of Italy, and find out from him what the real deal is in Italy and find out how things are going for him, his band members, and his family. Stand by for ringing sound. Hello. Jack, this is Glenn. How are you? I am doing well. I've got Dan with me. How are you is the big question. It's rough over <laughs> there in Italy. What's... Hey, Jack. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Dan. Since our last interview, you've studied some English? Yeah, I'm, I'm, st I'm studying English. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to exercise, to watch films, movies, uh, watch um, YouTube videos in uh, American English and uh, British English and trying to uh, understand better. <laughs> Excellent. That's awesome. So, Jack, tell us what life is like for you right now in Italy. We're just going to turn the microphone over to you to let you share what you're doing there, how your family is, how the band is, and what's going on. Currently, we are locked down in our houses, but uh, we are all in good health, uh, at least my family and my friends and uh, the musician of, uh, of my band, of our band. I'm working from home, 
but uh, schools are closed, and so uh, I have kids at home, and so I have to homeschool my uh, my two sons. And, uh, no, <laughs> ju just one son because uh, the other son is um, one year old, and uh, so <laughs> I I just have to play with him and. And so life is, is strange. I never, uh, I don't know how to say, it's a strange situation because we, we are locked down and uh, we, can, we, we cannot exit from home. We can just uh, get out from, um, buy groceries, supplies. Jack, yeah. quick question. As far as where you live, do you live in a larger city area or more out in the country? Or describe kind of how your arrangement is. I, li I live in a country, in far, far from big cities, Okay, I have to say. And uh, we, we are a bit far from uh, the red, the dark red zones. The the situation here is uh, is quiet. In the hospitals uh, is uh, is quiet, not so busy like uh, otherwhere. Mm. So the big city hospitals they're really busy right now over there, Jack. Yeah, the hospitals are very packed, and uh, the medical staff is uh, hard working, night and day. There is big concern. Because uh, our um, our system of uh, hospitals uh, in in some in uh, in uh, some zones are um, is quite full. There are zone, uh, cities in Italy, in the in the north especially, where hospitals are very are full are quite full. If the the outbreak is um, uh, still growing. Uh, the situation could be could be difficult, very difficult. When you go grocery shopping, is it hard to get groceries? I know that sounds like a really simple question, but that's something that our listeners here in the United States are very concerned about, is eventually having a problem of getting groceries over here. What's it like to go get groceries in Italy right now? There's not be a big problem to, because uh, it's not a, a big deal because you, there are lines. You have to wait because uh, we have to keep uh, we, we have to maintain uh, social distances. And no, it's not a a big deal because uh, you you have just to wait ten minutes uh, in line, and then you you can enter and and buy groceries. You you have to wear a mask, gloves, and that's it. Are there any other essential services that has become more difficult to obtain? Maybe like fire, police, electricity, water. Any problems with anything like that? Till now, I have uh, I have uh, all that we need. Um, there are no problem of electricity or internet connection or gas. Uh, till now, uh, everything is going is going on, but uh, we don't know we don't know what will happen. Jack, do you feel a turn in the I guess uh, the mood of the nation or the people that you're around, where they are some? or a lot are turning to look towards God or towards prayer or the Bible for hope? Uh, yeah. Uh, the first week of, um, of lo locking, uh, locking down, uh, the situation was a bit crazy, you know? You know, people sang from windows and balcony, flash mobs, a lot of memes and funny videos on social media. But uh, now the situation is uh, a bit more depressed, and so uh, pastors start uh, has started to to preach through social media, and seems that 
people are trying to find a way to get through this mm. because uh, because there is big concern about uh, uh, the economical consequences of this crisis and people are uh, are uh, already losing their jobs yeah the, that's be uh, there is big concern and uh, and pastors are trying to to help uh, the citizens. When we were texting back and forth the other day, you indicated to me that you've been seeing the United States on the news. What mm -hmm. have you been seeing about the United States and Italy? What, have, what are they telling you about what's going on over here? I'm just curious to see what it is. I watch CNN, so uh, I don't know how it's um, uh, the political reference of uh, CNN, but uh, you maybe you know better than me. <laughs> it, it can be slanted. <laughs> that wasn't an I'm, being, you know, I'm being nice. It can be slanted. We affectionately refer to it as the Communist News Network. Network. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was being nice. They're, they're, yeah, Glenn's nicer than I am. Um, they're they're horrible, and most of the news is you know it's hard to find good sources uh, anymore. But yeah. That's that's sad. They they pretty much just doesn't matter who's involved. They just criticize anything that anybody does. That's it's very negative. Yeah, very negative. Uh, but very negative. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the first day, um, I I didn't see great big concern, but day day after day, I I've seen that uh, the president. Uh, start to to concern and start to to move to take a decision and is happening i i think that in the usa is happening uh, what have hap happened in italy uh, two or three weeks ago yeah you're right because we've been watching italy and that's one thing that the president doesn't want to have happen here is what what's happened with you guys for our listeners italy is the size of what rhode island pretty much in the united mm. states and we're a very big country with lots of states and just watching what's happened over there it's, it's more difficult to control over here because we're so much so much bigger and he, yeah. he they've been we've been taking a real close look at what's been going on over there to make sure that that doesn't happen here maybe um, usa as as an advantage because um is is bigger than italy and maybe just the president will uh, will shut down all, only two or three cities. Uh, I don't know New York, Los Angeles. I don't know because uh, in there social distances are uh, very are very strict, very close. In the countryside, maybe you you have more space. I don't know. We do. There's a lot of cows in the country. So. <laughs> if it was a case of mad cow disease, there'd be a problem in some places, but uh, not not everywhere. Jack, I have a question. It's kind of a treatment question. Um, I read something that had been translated out of French and also translated from Italian, and it was talking about warning people about taking anti-inflammatory treatments such as ibuprofen or um what was the other name um even aspirin uh they were warning against taking certain over-the-counter common medications that would help if you had the flu and they were recommending that people take tylenol or para i can't remember the name of the the common one in europe but um are you familiar with that and i realize these are some medical names that may not be common uh to you but have you heard anything about not taking aspirin or ibuprofen yeah uh i've heard but uh, i um, i never i i didn't didn't have the time to verify if uh, is uh, is a real concern or just a fake news i got you okay mm -hmm. Uh, I I have read just some messages on WhatsApp from my family, but uh, I didn't have time to verify. 
Also, a related question would be, have you heard about the possible treatment with certain malaria drugs? What was the name of it? Chloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Is there any talk in Italy about trying that particular drug? No, I I never heard about that. Okay, interesting. We don't know. And for our listeners, it's something that obviously the president was referring to the other day that I'm sure they're looking into. It could just be a rumor. It could be false hope. It could be a distraction. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. But um, And Dan and I do not have any medical expertise. Yeah. We, we're not doctors, though. We stayed at a Holiday Inn Express once and <laughs> maybe played one on TV. Mean yeah. <laughs> but we, we don't know. We're just I used trying a stethoscope once. Did you really? Yeah. There you go. Jack, how has this changed your life? the most everything is changed because uh, i i'm not uh, able to to rehearse with uh, my band i'm i cannot i cannot go to the office i i cannot go to the gym and my sons are uh, cannot go to school and so we are here and i can i can work from home but uh, we have a lot of free times, <laughs> free time, <laughs> and uh, I have I have my my bass guitar at home. I I practice. I <laughs> I watch movies, and that's the, our life at there, the moment. There's an expression or a word in in English that you can use to describe that perfectly. It's called stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're it, to be stir crazy means that you're you're locked in you you get bored you're like oh i need to get out and rehearse and you're probably going to write a bunch of good music oh there's I, probably going to be a new s91 album coming out of this in the yeah. future <laughs> oh, yeah. i'm looking i'm looking forward to that it will be <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe a lot of uh, ideas yeah I was when I saw the people singing from the windows and Glenn uh, set up the interview with you. I was like, I wonder if Jack is like in one of those windows, but singing and playing heavy metal. <laughs> A good scream. <laughs> yeah, that would go viral. Well, I, okay, uh, my uh, friends, uh, Francesco, my guitarist, uh, uh, played. Uh, on his balcony, but uh, I have to say that uh, um, I put my face out of the windows. I I never see. I, I know I, I didn't see anybody and just uh, come back. <laughs> <laughs> that rocks that he played on the balcony. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that rocks. That's really really cool. How can we yeah. in the United States best pray for you, your family, the band in Italy right now? Because we're all in this together. There is no winner in this situation. It's the entire world. What can our listeners and what can we do? How can we pray for you guys over there? Yeah, you you, you can pray for us. And we are struggling to find uh, uh, some hospitals and some people uh, is struggling to find um, medical furniture, so that could be an help for us. But um, those are you, you really important pray. things. Yeah, those, those are important things that you need to take care of the people that have the illness. And then there's just regular routine medical things that happen even without this. You know, things mm -hmm. people yeah, get masks. There's, yeah, there's other sicknesses and everything like that as well. Wow. Yeah, masks, gloves, and uh, vi uh, ventilator. I have read that um, hospitals are struggling with uh, with a uh, ventilator. Me medical furniture, in general. Yeah, we'll definitely be praying for that. Yeah, because the hospitals are prepared for normal levels, not not uh, this. just every day to have more and more no. people. Well, yeah. we definitely are going to pray that that it turns, that it begins to die down and um, gets control mm -hmm. over it. And hopefully, a thing that we'll pray too is I've heard that sometimes these viruses will mutate and they will do it to make them less aggressive. And obviously, the, there's the risk that sometimes they could go more aggressive, but that I don't think that's the tendency because it ends up running out of room, running out of hosts. And I think they go 
more towards the milder thing. So I'm, I'm, there's hope there. I'm hoping that it changes and all of a sudden it's not quite as virulent or deadly, you know. Yeah. And Jack, we're going to open up the microphone again for you to speak to your fellow countrymen in Italian and share with them what you would want to share. And we'd hope that you would share this podcast with your fellow countrymen in Italy as well. So whatever you want to say in your native language, just just go for it, man. Okay. Se qualcuno che parla in italiano è in ascolto, eh, io non, non ho molto da dire perché eh, sono un uomo semplice, non, non lavoro ne, nel settore medico e quindi non ho, non ho ricette da, da condividere eh, con voi. Posso solo dire che dobbiamo, dobbiamo avere fede, dobbiamo avere fede che che tutto possa andare nel migliore dei modi anche se, è, anche se il mondo dovesse, dovesse crollarci addosso e dobbiamo sperare che, di, di risalire e dobbiamo continuare ad avere fede in un, in un futuro migliore dobbiamo avere fede in Dio soprattutto che possa aiutarci e in questo periodo quello che possiamo e dobbiamo fare è di seguire i, i consigli delle autorità, ascoltare gli esperti, seguire le regole e le linee guida perché chi ci governa sta cercando di eh, tracciare una strategia e se nessuno segue quelle regole, se nessuno segue la strategia diventa impossibile, eh, diventa impossibile capire se la strategia è buona o cattiva, se può funzionare, ecco, quindi l'unica cosa che mi sento di dire appunto è di avere fede e di, e di seguire i consigli dell'autorità. That's it. See, it's not fair. See, <laughs> when you speak your language, I picture like a Ferrari flying through the countryside and some beautiful landscape. When I listen to myself talk, It's like I see an old rusty pickup truck with the muffler being held up by duct tape. <laughs> it's just yeah, not fair. Not, I'm like, well, well hey, hey y'all, we're, we're talking to my friend Jack. Yeah. Hey, Jack. And then it's all Ferrari. Yeah. And with me, it's just all you know rusty what they, pickup you know what truck. They, you know what they probably really imagine about us when they hear us talk? is cowboys on horses maybe probably cowboys <laughs> or a box of macaroni and cheese or something i don't know <laughs> the other thing that i'd like to do jack is i said we'd give you an artist's pick of what song from s91 you'd like us to feature and mm -hmm. i believe you picked joan of art correct i love that song yeah all right well we're going to take a quick break and dan and i are going to come back we're going to talk about Psalm 91 from the scriptures, but let's take a listen to S91's Joan of Arc.
Psalm 91. Not a coincidence. As I keep saying, the more that we do this, the less and less I believe in coincidences. Psalm 91. After talking to Jack through text the other day, I was like, you know what? I need to go take a look at Psalm 91 and see what's in there. Because we touched upon it about a year ago, a little bit about the importance of Psalm 91, but really I didn't have a full revelation or a deeper understanding of it. But I started taking a look at it, Dan, and in the Jewish Talmud, do you know what the Psalm 91 is referred to as? What? The Song of Plagues. Hmm. The Song of Plagues. So Psalm 91, 91 at verse 3, it says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and here's where it gets interesting, and from the noisome pestilence. So doing a little bit of study, I took a look at the Berean Study Bible translation, and it says, Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly plague. Hmm. So this is a song about being delivered by plagues. So I took a look at some numerology, too. I just totally nerded out after talking to Jack. Yeah, imagine. 91, the, the factors, I'm using math terms, the factors of 91 are 7 times 13. Two interesting numbers because seven. You're not in a secret society. I right? am no. Okay, no, good. No. We're yeah. going to start our own. <laughs> <laughs> but then it wouldn't be a secret. You yeah. just announced oh. it on an international broadcast. <laughs> seven is the number of perfection, usually referring to the perfectness of God, and thirteen is the number of rebellion and sin. So basically, when you multiply seven times thirteen, you get ninety-one, which is God in the midst of rebellion and sin and darkness. And there were some other things in Psalm 91 that I found very, very interesting. At verse 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And God showed me is that we have the choice of where we're going to abide. And last week we were talking about fear. We can choose to abide in fear. We can choose to abide in sin. We can choose to abide in confusion but we can choose to abide in the Lord's presence. And the only way that can be done is through the blood of the Lamb. And God showed me this yesterday and this morning. When you go back to Israel and Egypt during the times of of the plagues before they left Egypt during the Exodus, they abode in their houses. They feared the Lord. This is something we were talking about a couple weeks ago was fearing the Lord. They obeyed what the Lord said and put the blood of the Passover lamb on their doorposts, and they abode in their houses. They stayed there. And because of that, they were in the protective place of of the secret protective place of the Most High, and the angel of death passed over them. Hmm. So the nation of Israel is very, very familiar with plagues. So we choose where we want to dwell. And when you take a look, at Psalm 91 at verse 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There are two names for God used in that one verse. The first one is the Most High, which is El Elyon, which means the powerful, the supreme, that the sovereign, the one who has everything under control. So we said this last week that with whatever's going on, whatever this all means, it has not taken God by surprise at all. No. And then the shadow of the Almighty, Almighty is El Shaddai. Now I know probably Amy Grant's song is going through your head. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. And he's the sufficient one. So he's going to supply all of our needs in the midst of this. Hmm. And you and I were talking about that just a minute ago, about kind of the protective bubble that Mm -hmm. you and I have been in. Dan, can you share with what's been going on with you? Yeah, just, um, you know, not getting too in the weeds about all the specifics about our life, but there's been a lot of uncertainty and friction, just a lot of different things going on personally, a lot of changes in business and so forth. And you feel like, oh, pig on roller skates, which decision do I make? You pray and you're like, is that indigestion or is that the Lord telling me to do something? You know, you go through these normal things and and you feel kind of chaotic and like, oh, is God there? Is he directing my steps? Is he, it just feels out of control. And then you feel personally like, I don't know about you, but sometimes I fluctuate. Sometimes I'm like, man, I'm really close to the Lord. Other times I feel like, you know, just uh, 
distant or yeah. cold or like I've blown it or, you know, like different things. You go through different stuff. So just dealing with that and the reality of those fluctuations in my walk, I felt a little bit like, man, I'm just, if this happens at the wrong time, I'm so vulnerable, I'm just going to get creamed. And now it's almost like glancing behind me and seeing that I was able to walk across certain bridges as they were falling, you know, and I got b- back and then I turn around and that that's gone. And he was moving me out of the way of ruin, even though I haven't liked certain aspects of where I'm at right now. I've, I haven't liked I wanted to move on in certain areas. And then it's like you get completely stalled where you can't. And then you look back and you're like, you um i drift at times part of our background of doctrinal confusion i think my flesh uses as a clutch or crutch Crutch, sometimes clutch one of my favorite (laughs) bands um but and and honestly and then i'll be like well i just don't know what i believe and i'll fluctuate because i can be part charismatic and then part like no i don't see whatever and then i can go to one side or the other so without getting too far into it, it's just amazing when I look at your life, because we bear one another's burdens, you know, we're, I'm out of toilet paper. You're like, hey, man, I'll spot you a couple That's of right. Work. If you need two rolls, I'll give you two. Today. Oh, oh okay. I thought we were talking sheets. You're actually going <laughs> to give me rolls. Dude, this guy is a true bro. Um, anyway, so I just, I do see that provision, and it's when I wasn't feeling it. Like a lot of times our sensuality or our imagination or our forecasting or our sense of merit. Because even though you might talk about grace, I talk about grace, we believe in grace, that whole thing of when you feel like a scum sucking worse than tarnation, I'm trying to use cartoon. Who is cartoon. It? Yosemite Sam it's Yosemite type Sam, cuss words, yeah. I guess that's legal. Um, what, you know, you feel bad and there's this established kind of merit system that you have in your mind. When the shadow of the Almighty and even what you were talking about, the blood on the doorpost, that was very positional and provisional. It was It had nothing to do with merit. It had to do with God's provision and the position that you were in in respect to that and whether or not he had illuminate, you know, I, I, I get it. But it's like when I look back, I'm like, why in the world would he do that for me? And I guess that's the correct answer. That's always the correct answer. When you look and see that, whoa, the suspension bridge right after I got across just broke. And you're like, I didn't think I was in that cool of a position I was probably whining about it or mad at my life or, and then you look and you're like, huh, whoa, dude, God was really there for me when I felt like he was not. And then you get this real stoked feeling of, man, I didn't deserve any of that, which is, I guess that's probably the desired place. I I think, I think that's it. It has nothing to do with feeling. And it reminds me of something that our friend Mel Becker said about a year ago about the blood on the doorpost is that in those houses on that night of the Passover, there were some non-Israelites in those houses that were spared as well, that left with Israel. Just because the they were hanging out playing Yahtzee with the Jews? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, really, because oh, wow. they were in that position. No one was harmed in that house where the blood was. Mordecai, can I borrow a cup of... <laughs> <laughs> it's uno it's, it's 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 uno night and we're gonna watch walking dead or whatever right. on you that's, know netflix yeah that's a really she laid it down on that show she did that show kind of she kind of prophesied on me a little bit that, she did kind of stuck but it's been really fun for me because you know we've talked about this i've been making some at the point of making some major decisions in my life. Yes, you have. And I even went to go see a good friend of ours, a brother in the Lord for many, many years to get some godly counsel from him on what I was doing because I was like, I just need to talk to somebody else just to get some good wisdom. And I know I'm a pig. I know I'm on roller skates, but do you think I'm rolling hysterically in the right direction? Get <laughs> just, some good kids. Just, just push me. <laughs> just push me in the right direction, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got my my bicycle helmet on. What was that? Was there a commercial like go wee? Yeah, the something? kid, uh, the pig with the pinwheel in the back of the yeah, Geico, the Geico okay. commercial, okay. the Geico commercial, and he, I texted him the other day. I was like, well, my decisions have been pretty much made for me. This is kind of like receiving a copy of Decision Making for Dummies book where I look back because just like you, I'm like, okay, am I making the right decision? Is God in this? Is this just me wanting to do this or what? Or how is this all going to work? And 
none of this makes any sense to me just but i know for certain that these are things that i need to do and then oh well a global pandemic <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess i go this way yeah exactly oh i'm gonna have to go this way now i've got no other kind of like jonah getting swallowed up by the whale and spit on the shores of nineveh just that is getting, the most one of the most interesting parts of scripture to me by the way just, i was just getting spewed out yeah 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 yeah, yeah. My new book, Spittle, <laughs> Spewed them. You know, it's like. I think I think God recognizes my frame and weakness in making those decisions because there was a, another friend of mine. Ethereal vomit. Ethereal vomit. <laughs> another friend of mine that mentioned that to me a couple weeks ago. I was like, dude, I just don't know what I'm going to do. He's like, ah, don't worry. God will just spit you out eventually where you need to be anyway. God's little chunk of vomit. <laughs> An autobiography by Glenn. You're making me feel really good right now. I am. Damn. It's like we're thinking like, oh, I'm this vessel of honor when we're really like the toilet brush. Yeah. Or really? the, uh, let's say, what else would be really gross? But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we're talking about Psalm 91. One. Psalm Tell 91 me. at verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. But at 91 at verse 6 nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. This is something you and I were talking about yesterday, or it actually was the day before on the phone. It's like, where did this come from? Who's behind this? How did this get out here? It's a mystery. And when you look in scripture, plagues are mysteries. Yeah. The walking in darkness walketh a really bad English word really means to spread and to go to and fro and to go abroad. Hmm. Okay. And then in darkness means lack of having divine reception or dis- divine insight. You really don't know. It's a mystery as to what's going on. So God's doing many things. Uh, it, this is where it gets really weird, Dan, because yeah, there's got things that God's working out in this for me. He, there's things that he's working out in this for you. And there's things that he's working out for all of our listeners. There's things that he's working out for the world. He's got all of this going on. And that's why he's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. How doing all these things, it's not just about, it's just not about Glenn and his decisions and what he's going to make. No, God did not cause a global pandemic to make it easier for me to make decisions. Exactly. But he's got this whole big matrix of things going on. And he can do them all at the same time with a, the right outcome. And even we have to bear with suffering with that. There's some people that are like hurting right yes. now. And yes. what's weird is you and I in certain areas were hurting before this. And then all of a sudden this that's causing suffering in a whole lot of other people's yeah. lives and death and so forth um, actually may have alleviated certain points of somebody else's suffering it's weird how god works it all out and he is sovereign it's mysterious i can't answer when people are like hey why it's like it's always mercy there is no darkness in god but he does use darkness to confound us and to conceal the things that he's doing even in the book of habakkuk he talked about hey i'm going to do something in the world that even if i told you you're not going to get it you're not gonna you're not gonna understand it. Oh yeah. We just don't have the ability of comprehending that. So for anybody out there that's listening right now at this time that's that's scared about this, and I know that people are scared. That that's real. There's a real virus out there, but God is still in control right now. And then uh, I want to go to verse ninety, uh, chapter nine, uh, Psalm ninety one, verse ninety seven. It says, "A thousand shall fall at thy side at thy side." and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. This verse has been misused many times. Be like, yeah, I'm going to be victorious in the Lord, and there's going to be thousands that fall on my side and 10,000s on this side. Um, Yeah, I was one of those who believed that till I reread it. What that's talking about is that's talking about the death toll from a plague. Oh, wow. Thousands will fall by thy side, ten thousands by thy right side, but it will not come unto thee. So if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, his covering, and that covering is the blood, that is those who have been born again, those who have been miraculously saved. And also, too, those after you're saved who choose to live in the, the proper fear of the Lord, of doing what he says, of obeying his word. And it will not touch you. And I just found it interesting here because we're like, oh, 
you know, the death toll is what, a thousand, ten thousand. That's not a lot of people. But when you look in scripture at Psalm 91, thousands and ten thousands is about the death toll for a plague. Well, there's a whole lot there that I think we can unpack. I mean, you look at it in Glenn. We live in the advent of science, right? And we have microscopes and we have the ability to map out a genome. And we uh, think we understand probably more than we really do. But we get to look at that stuff. We understand germ theory. We, uh, you know, we, we get it. There's pathogens involved. We understand somewhat the mystery of a virus that is not alive, but kind of is. And it hijacks, weird. hijacks epigenetics and then goes and just invades. And very strange, stranger than fiction. But even in that, it still moves in darkness in this this unpredictable, predatory fashion that could make you freak out in fear. And there was a specific time when those 10,000s, those were real people. And it was talking about David or whoever. Yes. And they yes. were dealing with that. And now in scriptural interpretation, we look at theological things. We look at it for comfort. But where we rest is this transcends the temporal. Whatever outcome... Because some people, there's eventually a ticket home for all of us, mm -hmm. right? Right. You know, you, it, it may be Buick, you know. All oh, she Chevy with duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that truck came out of nowhere. Dan, Dan did not see it coming. Dan's, Dan's chariot yeah, is like, a Chevy boom. with duct tape. <laughs> and Dan didn't really please the Lord too much, but he was taken out by a Chevy or a, a Buick. Just as long as he doesn't come pick me up in a minivan, I'm okay. <laughs> and a Dodge Grand Caravan <laughs> with rear AC. And, um, anyway, it took uh, Glennard out. So anyway, we, we make jest of that because we know unless you're going to, you know, Enoch, wait, you know, and you just get sucked out of here because you're doing something extraordinary. Um, you're probably going to have a ticket home, right? For mm -hmm. some people. The coronavirus will be a ticket home. It's yeah. scary to say that out loud, but it's like, yeah, the flu, auto accident, cancer, things happen. And things happen with believers, and we all get to go home in some way or the other unless we meet him in the air, right? So in the comfort that transcends the temporal outcome, it would be that this God in the Old Testament, in Psalm 91, that's giving comfort and provision and protection and this in his time of doing something for his people in his will, it's all in his will. And it, it seems is. fatalistic, and it's not one of those things that it's like, I'm not going to wear gloves, I'm not going to wear a mask, because if God wants me to go, no, you, you, you go for it. You're itching. You're I scratching. love what you just said there, because this is the psalm that Satan used to tempt Jesus to jump off the temple pinnacle. Is it really? Yes, it is, because his angels shall have charge over thee, and I was thinking the whole time, don't go licking doorknobs, people. Oh my don't goodness. don't go tempting the Lord that, oh, wow, it's going to be, use wisdom. Do what the health officials say. Do it. Do what the president says to do. They are looking out for your best interest. We need to get out of this mentality. They are not telling us to do anything illegal, immoral, or against scripture at all. All right. This is not a time to be, well, I'm going to go against what everybody's telling me to do because I'm going to handle snakes and the Lord says I'm going to be okay. Don't yeah. do it. That's <laughs> tempting the Lord. Yeah. And you know, a doorknob, if you really wanted to go there, probably lick your cell phone. You know, if you really, oh. the cell phones, like I, I've been rubbing mine down with like wipes and doing all kind of stuff. And I'm not that big of a germophobe person, but um, cell phones are disgusting. They did like Petri yeah. dish tests with them. Toilet yeah. seats are going to be way cleaner than really? your average cell phone. They're nasty, brother. Nasty. Oh. So let me oh. think of anything else that could gross our <laughs> audience out. Oh, The other Glenn. thing that I get from this psalm, going back to 91, the product of the factors 7 and 13, 91 is a number that is associated with angels. Really? Yep. And that's how the Lord protects us a lot of times, is with angels. He will give his angels charge over you. It talks about in Scripture it's how Satan tried to tempt Jesus. The Hebrew word malach uh, comes out, the, the numerical value comes out to 91. Hmm. Okay. And right now, knowing that, I can guarantee you that angels are probably working overtime right now with this plague going on and you look in the book of exodus they get time and time and a half time and a half yeah <laughs> <laughs> they get time and a half no unemployment for angels right now 
So <laughs> doing a little bit more digging, 91 is also the numerical value for a town that was in the, Ju- the Judean city of Benjamin. And that town's name was Oakland. Huh. 91 is the equivalent of Oakland. And if you take a look, I'm just kind of going out there a little bit. You can reel me back in if you need to, Dan. Yeah, I'm just, I yeah, want to make sure I'm you're not in a secret society. No, I'm not in a secret society. No, I'm, you did quote something out of the Talmud, which <laughs> freaks me out. But go ahead. No problem. <laughs> I'm just going to sit over here for a little while. All right. <laughs> 91, Oakland, the Bay Area of California is one of the hardest hit areas in the United States. Interesting. And the Bay Area is pretty much where this thing started to originate. Hmm. What it just goes to show may have something to do with it, may not have anything to do with it, but you can rest in this, is this is totally controlled under the sovereignty of God. Even if, I'm going to put on my uh, tinfoil hat, even if there is some sort of orchestration of this. Yeah. Like we both said that we believe it, it's real, but there's some creepy things. I don't know whether it's credible, but there's creepy, like beyond coincidence sort of things that some, the, the cult that thinks that they run the world may be putting out there. And I, I, I believe that a lot of that is, there's some truth to some of it. There so, is, yeah. There, there's truth everywhere. And in nines this. and ones mean a lot to those guys. And so do winter and summer solstices. So do the alignment of planets. So do Nephilim and all that esoteric. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff. And if you look at when this outbreak happened, when it first popped up, it was around the winter solstice. It's very interesting. That is very interesting. And then, yeah. Okay. And all of that is a perver- I'll remove the, the tinfoil hat. That's okay. All of that is a perversion of what's in scripture. Yeah. You don't need to go to that stuff. Well, they're being used. They're being kind of like Judas. They think, oh, we're going to do this because we're motivated by control, domination, money, 30 pieces of silver. But what you actually don't understand that you're doing is fulfilling something that was in God's mind, and you're just a stooge. That's a very good point. You know, it is. Think about Judas. I mean, he was still culpable. We know that from what Mm -hmm. was said about him. It's better if he wasn't ever born, all this stuff. He was the son of perdition, all the different things that we know. So it's not like he was this bot. He wanted what he was doing. He wanted that silver. He wanted that anger and that betrayal and wanted to just go all gamma male on Christ. You know, he wanted to do these things and he was culpable for doing them, but he was also precisely used within the paradigm of the, and the, this gauntlet of the sovereignty of God, which is like, blah, I don't get it. It's where human right. responsibility meets the sovereignty of God. It's that, that uh, irresistible force and movable object, you yeah. know, sort of paradigm. It's interesting. And we've talked about that on the grander scale of just how God uses Satan. Yeah. He thinks he, Satan thinks he's on this freedom spree when he's contained in this box. Yeah. And he's being used for God's purposes. Like we talked about in the last edition that it was God that suggested to Satan to go test Job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, that, still, I'm still reeling yeah, over no, that that'll, one. That'll binge you. <laughs> well, you think about it. In the, in the book of the Revelation, there's a certain point, and we may have mentioned this last week because it's kind of fresh on my mind, but that one time this this angel, this entity, this being is like thrown down in front of the nations and they're like, this? Yes. Th- th- that. Yeah. That the man behind the curtain, you know. <laughs> Isaiah. The short stubby guy behind the curtain. Don't pay any attention. You know, yeah. the Oz. That's the guy that deceived the nations yeah. that created all this mayhem. Yeah, that's in the book of Isaiah. When we see what he really looks like and what he is, it's going to be like, what a whim. Yeah. It probably looks like Millhouse from The Simpsons or something like that, you know. <laughs> um, but it's all smoke and mirrors. Mm. And he's on he's on a leash. He's on a very short leash. God's got him under control. At and the same time, he could kick our behonkus backwards and forwards. Because he's and, a being level above us. And we're like, the Lord rebuke you. I'm not into all that like uh glory, we're gonna no. stomp out the di-. No, you're no. not. You're not no. gonna do it. It's no. not gonna happen. You're looking at a level of entity that is a little bit higher than us that has some abilities and a lot more wisdom than we do in some things. Oh yeah. You know, he's been around for a real long time, but God's got him under control. Yeah. And then you get to be used. I guess we all get to be used just in different chosen allotments. You know, that's my inner Calvinist. The times that I enjoy the most being used are the times that I don't even realize it. Yeah. 
when maybe a week later or two weeks later, be like, man, what you said the other day, really meant it. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's the times, <laughs> it's times we go out and we're like, man, I am so like anointed. <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, and we're like a wrecking ball. The, the angels are like, they're working overtime just because uh, Glenn thinks he knows something right now. Dan is like, Dan, we got to shut him up. You know, it's like, man, man, it's this alarm. They go sliding down the fire. He's onto something. <laughs> Here we go. Mm, yeah. I don't yeah. know. But oh, no. uh, everybody that's listening to this podcast, we thank you for joining us All on the Game Real Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening and putting up with us. The coffee, it's the coffee this morning. This is one of our Sponsored, morning editions. Not officially by Chaco <laughs> Full of Nuts. <laughs> no, it's fun. A little self deprecation yeah. thrown in. If you take it too seriously, I just looked and I'm like, uh, pig on roller skates and then you look behind you and they're like how did i expertly dodge all of those landmines cool i didn't <laughs> and then that really ticks off the people that are working really hard to do it yeah in their own power and their own strength yeah they're like that that guy that dan how did he do it again he's driving around in a beat up chevy with duct tape uh, i know i make it look easy <laughs> but uh it's just what i do people <laughs> It's just what I do. do. No, that's yeah. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at Lithos Cry. L- not for strangulation no. purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to let you get through this. You're trying to get off of the, the I crazy am, train I am here. I'm not going to okay. let me go ahead. Try again. Lithos Cry. L i t h o s c r y at gmail dot com, and you can check us out on our website at lithoscry dot com. Hey, please share this podcast with your friends, family. Um, you know, if you want to keep them, maybe don't share it. I don't know, (laughs) but, uh, go ahead and share this with everybody that you would like to share it with. We ask that you do that. That's the, really the biggest way that you can support us is we're not going to sell you the next edition. That's going to give you the cure to coronavirus for 1999, uh, to unlock the secrets. Just (laughs) share this with, with your friends and family. Peace out and rock on people. Thank you. Later. Lithoscry.com.